today we're going to be talking about prepositions and we're going to continue where we left off from last week. So to start, we're going to talk a little bit about prepositional phrases. A prepositional phrase is a preposition plus a little bit more. It all, always begins with a preposition. So a word like at or in or from or with that those small little prepositions that we learned about. And then it also has the object of that preposition. The object is either going to be a noun or a pronoun. So if you're not sure where the prepositional phrase ends, right, notice that it begins with a preposition, it's going to end with either a noun or a pronoun. That will be the last word in, in the prepositional phrase. Let's look at some examples. This one says a dolphin is an example of a mammal, right? So we can see that the prepositional here, the prepositional phrase here is of a mammal. Notice that it begins with the preposition of, and that it has an object, a noun or pronoun, a mammal, right? That's how we know that it's ended, right? Also, a prepositional uh, phrase can have an object that is a gerund. A gerund means verb, ing, right? So this could be like doing or playing or seeing, right? A gerund looks like a verb, but it's actually not a verb. It's a noun. So that's why the object can also be a gerund, which is actually a noun. Here's an example. Many people are tired of staying at home, but we must. First, see if you can find the preposition. Then, see if you can find a gerund that goes with that preposition. So if you said that the prepositional phrase is of staying at home, you are correct. We have the preposition of, and we have staying, which is a gerund, right? Verb and ing, right? And the phrase continues staying where? Staying at home, right? Actually, here we have two prepositional phrases. We have of staying, and then we also have another preposition at, and the object of at is home. So actually, we have two preposition, prepositional phrases in this sentence. A little bit more about where prepositional phrases can happen. We can see a prepositional phrase at the beginning in the middle, or at the end of a sentence, right? When a prepositional phrase is at the beginning of a sentence, we're going to put a comma after a prep the prepositional phrase. So only when it's at the beginning of the sentence. For example, before starting your essay, comma, right? This is the prepositional phrase. We're going to put a comma here you should make an outline. If we switch the two clauses and we put before at the end of the sentence, there will be no comma. So only put a comma after a prepositional phrase that is at the beginning of a sentence. Here are a few more sentences. Each one of them have a prepositional phrase at the beginning. So you can pause the video as you think about this, but what I'd like you to do is pause the video, read the sentence, identify the prepositional phrase, and put a comma where the prepositional phrase ends. In a moment, I'm going to give you the answer. So again, please stop the video while you think about it so you can have a chance to guess on your own. So here are the answers, students. Because of the heavy rain, comma, here we have because of as the preposition, right? Remember we learned that last week. And the heavy rain, right? Rain is a noun. So heavy is an adjective that describes that noun. This is the object, the heavy rain, right? Because of the heavy rain, comma. Number two, after thinking about it, right? Here we can see a pronoun as the object, right? After thinking about it, and did you notice that here we actually have two prepositional phrases? We have after thinking, and we also have about it. So the whole preposition is going to be after thinking about it, comma. And number three, due to the snow, 
comma. The picnic was canceled. Again, due to is our preposition, and we have the snow as the noun. Due to the snow, comma, the picnic was canceled. Again, if we were to flip these two sentences or these two clauses and say the picnic was canceled due to the snow, would we put a comma? No, because in that case, the prepositional phrase is at the end. Okay, very good students. One last thing is that in academic writing, it is common to have a prepositional phrase that describes the subject. Now let me show you what I mean. Here we have a sentence. The reason for this decision is clear, right? In the black, we have the prepositional phrase. For is the preposition. This decision is the noun or the object of the preposition. So for this decision is the preposition. And the reason is the subject in the sentence. Can you identify the verb in the sentence? Is, good. So here the prepositional is, phrase is not describing the verb, it's actually describing the, the subject. So for this decision describes the reason. The reason for this decision is clear. In the second one, one cause of stress is money. In the black is the prepositional phrase, and we have a subject, one cause, and a verb is. The prepositional phrase here is describing the cause or the subject. One cause is money. One cause of what? One cause of stress is money. Okay, so see how the prepositional phrase describes the subject. We often use these kinds of sentences when we're writing a topic sentence for a body paragraph, right? Maybe in the first one, we're writing about um, reasons. And in the second one, we might be writing a cause and effect essay about the causes of stress. A last thing to keep in mind is that a, preposition, a prepositional phrase between the subject and the verb does not affect the verb. So whether, whoops, whether this uh, prepositional phrase is singular or plural, it will not affect the subject verb agreement here, right? So the reason I say is and not are is because the reason the subject is singular. The reason is. Same here, one cause is, right? All right, so a little bit of stop and practice for you. In each of the sentences below, I'd like you to underline the prepositional phrases. The number of prepositional phrases in each sentence is shown in parentheses here. So for example, number one has two prepositional phrases. Now I'm gonna do the first one with you so you can see how to think about it. And then I'm gonna ask you to do the others on your own by stopping the video. So number one says, after leaving school, the children played tag at the park, okay? So here, the first thing I would do is I'd see, okay, there are two prepositional phrases here. The first thing I'm gonna do is find two prepositions. So I see, let's see, preposition, preposition. I see at, that's a preposition. And I also see after, that's also a preposition. So these tells me where the prepositional phrase begins. Remember, a prepositional phrase needs to begin with a preposition. How does a prepositional phrase end? With the object, and an object has to be a noun or pronoun. So I'm gonna begin my prepositional phrase with after, and then I'm gonna go until I see the noun that ends, right? After leaving school. This one also has a comma, which tells me that this is a prepositional, the whole thing is a prepositional phrase, right? After leaving school is what I would underline. Oops. The second one here begins with at. Can you tell where it ends? Can you find the noun or the object? If you said the park, then you're absolutely right. At the park is the prepositional phrase. So I would underline at the park and I would also underline after leaving school. Please pause the video while you do the other ones and I'm gonna give you the answers in just a moment. Okay, so here are the answers, right? After leaving school, at the park, in the refrigerator, in the classroom, with my students, near the back of the yard, with brown hair and green eyes, near Lars, at the banquet. 
Notice that for each one, I've also bolded the preposition that told me that this is the beginning of the prepositional phrase, right? And notice that each prepositional phrase ends with a noun, right? Refrigerator is a noun. Students are a noun. Yard is a noun. Eyes are a noun, right? If your prepositional phrase does not end with a noun, that's probably not the end, okay? All right, a couple of rules to remember about prepositions that we didn't talk about last time. The first one is that many times after a preposition, you'll want to use a verb. When we use a verb after a preposition, we're going to use the gerund form of the verb. That means verb ing. And this is because we need to make it into a noun. Remember that a gerund is actually not a verb, it's a noun. Here's an example in number one. Some parents worry about take their children to the beach. Sounds pretty good, right? Um, but there's actually a mistake here because we have a preposition, but it's not followed by a gerund. So first of all, can you find the preposition? Here we have a preposition about, right? What is it followed by? Take. Take is a verb, but it's not in the gerund form. So we need to change take to taking. Some parents worry about taking their young children to the beach, right? Notice that here we have another prepositional phrase, to the beach, but beach is a noun. It's not a verb, so we don't need to change anything here. We only need to change it to a gerund if this word after the preposition is a verb. Let's take a look at number two. Again, can you find the preposition and can you change the verb after the preposition to a gerund, verb ing? All right, so if you found the preposition of, then you're exactly right. It is followed by order, right? Is that the gerund form? No. So let's change it to ordering. Instead of ordering pizza tonight, let's make our own pizza at home. Notice that this verb make doesn't change, and that's because it is part of a new clause, right? The comma separates the prepositional phrase from the other clause. Okay, I see another preposition here, at, right? Is it followed by a noun or a verb? It's followed by a noun. Therefore, we don't need to change the noun to a gerund, right? Because it's not a verb. Okay, last one, number three. Again, try this on your own. Try to find the preposition and change the verb after it. All right, so if you said that the preposition is on, good job, and that we need to change help to helping, then you're doing great, okay? So this is a very important rule to remember, and it will really, really help the clarity of your writing, right? Many students don't learn this rule until much later in their preposition career. <laughs> So the fact that you're learning it now is awesome, right? Try to always remember, if I use a verb after a preposition, I need to change it to a gerund, okay? All right, a little bit of practice for you here. Um, again, try to change any verbs after the preposition to a gerund. And I'm gonna uh, show you the answers in just a moment. So please pause the video while you do this practice. Okay, students, so here are the answers. We're gonna change give to giving. Many people are afraid of giving a speech to a large audience. Number two, our reasons for moving to Chicago are to be closer to family and a cheaper cost of living. And number three, Patricia often worries about getting good grades, okay? Great, another great way to practice this is to write sentences on your own. Okay, make a sentence with afraid of and follow it with a verb in the ing. Make a sentence with for and follow reasons for and follow it with a verb in ing, right? Make a sentence with worry about and follow it with a verb in ing. Again, the more that you can practice this, the better off you'll be and the more it'll begin to sound a little bit more automatic or a little bit more natural to you. All right, rule number two to remember. We, um, we know that be plus adjective 
is often followed by to and verb base. Like, it is important to study. <laughs> or it is um, necessary to uh, stay at home right now. Mm -hmm. um, but when we have be plus an adjective and it's followed by a noun, we can't use to with a noun. We have to use the preposition for. Okay, so basically this only applies to when we have be and an adjective. If we're going to use a verb, we'll use it with the preposition to. If we're going to use a noun, we'll use it with the preposition for. Okay, let's look at some examples. Studying history is important for avoid repeating our previous mistakes. Here we have the verb be, and we also have the adjective important, right? Be an adjective. Um, after the adjective, it's followed by avoid. Is avoid a verb or a noun? Avoid is actually a verb, right? And so therefore, because this is a verb, we need to change our preposition for to the preposition to. Actually, the sentence should read, studying history is important to avoid repeating our previous mistakes, right? Here's another one. See if you can find if this sentence is correct or incorrect according to the formulas up here. First, look for B plus adjective. It is important to parents to make sure their children have some free time every day. Here we have is important. Again, B plus an adjective, right? But then we have the word parents. Is parents a verb or a noun? Well, parents is a noun, right? So we need to use the preposition for. It is important, oops, it is important for parents to make sure their children have some free time. Notice that after parents, then we can use a verb with to, right? Make is a verb with to. But if we're putting parents first, we need to have the noun plus for. Okay, a little bit of practice for you here. Again, I'm gonna do one together with you and then you're gonna do the others. Um, oh no, sorry, I'm not gonna do one together with you. But what I'm gonna ask you to do a little bit differently in this practice is I want you to tell me if it's correct or incorrect according to the formulas here. So is number one correctly using the correct preposition or do we need to change the preposition as something else? And first thing we're gonna do is look for B plus adjective. The next thing we're gonna do is notice if there's a verb or a noun following it. And that will help you decide which preposition to use. So some of the sentences are correct, some of them need fixing, okay? So again, pause the video while you think about this. I'm gonna give you the answer in just a moment. Okay, so here are the answers. Number one is correct, right? We have B plus the adjective. Then we have the verb stay, so we're gonna use to, right? To plus verb. Number two is incorrect. We need to change it to for because everyone is a noun and a noun needs that, the preposition for. Number three, we have be plus the adjective fun, right? Here, this one is incorrect. Children is a noun, so we need to use the preposition for. Number four, we have a new adjective, stressful. It is stressful. Four is incorrect though, right? Because no is a verb, even though we have a negative, not no, it's still a verb. So we need to use the preposition to, to plus verb. And the last one is actually correct, right? Wise is our adjective, be plus adjective. And then we have exercise, which can be a noun or a verb, right? So that might be a little bit tricky. But here, because we have an adverb, we know an adverb describes a verb, so this actually must be a verb. Therefore, we're going to use the preposition to, and that is correct. All right, students, so I hope that helps. Um, this is a lot of information, so I'm going to give you a lot of chances to practice. Um, if any of this is unclear, please feel free to either email me or come to my office hours, and I can do more practice and more explanation with you.